Let's get back to what really matters here. And it's that the next one came five by 30 points. And it was all... <laughs> it was all because of a massive fart. Gentlemen, welcome back. It's a brand new episode. This is Laugh With Me, a podcast with Jeremy Odom. I'm your host, J-O. And yes, we are your top five comedy stand-up podcasts, according to iTunes and according to all of you that listen to us. And yeah, we reside in the top 75 of comedy podcasts in the United States Thank you very much to everybody that's listening. Thank you so, so much. So to the thousands and thousands of you that listen, I can't say how excited I am to be back. I've got a great story for you. Uh, One that's, it's kind of... Uh, you know what? It's not that shocking. <laughs> if you've ever been around a group of fellows, or if you've ever been involved in a locker room of any type, this story really shouldn't shock you. And the fact that it was as received as well and as humorously as it was really shouldn't shock you either. But it made big, big news. In fact, it was after Game 5 of the Pacers and Knicks series in the NBA playoffs, if you've been if you've been following along, you know that in Game Five, the Knicks won by a staggering amount. They win by thirty points. They've been kind of hanging on in the series, uh, but then they completely destroy the Indiana Pacers by thirty points. How did they do it? How did they possibly just turn it up one game, get so loose that the stress and the pressures of the NBA playoffs just completely subside? And it really shouldn't be as shocking as it is when you find out. The, the story was written by Fred Katz of The Athletic in Thursday, or last Thursday's episode of the Knicks Film School podcast. He told the story that he, and he wouldn't say which player it was, but this is what happened. It said a, a epic fart is what loosened up the locker room. <laughs> Before the game, apparently they were watching, uh, or they were looking at pictures of their head coach Tom Thibodeau uh, from uh, another article. Uh, he was maybe in a bathing suit or something, and and it got the uh, it got the room laughing. One of the players let out an epic fart that got it, it. Apparently, it strung along for so long and at such a volume. And that player looked around and with a completely straight face said, something's up with the pipes here. That completely destroyed the locker room. They were rolling on the ground <laughs> laughing. And of course it was a fart that got the game got the game completely flipped upside down. I mean, when you really think about it, fart jokes never get old. And when you're in the locker room, boys will be boys. And here's the thing, this... This is something that probably happens often in the locker room. Maybe not in such a moment as this where it's very tense. It's the playoffs. They're trying to prepare for what's going to be a, a very, very big game five. And, you know, for that moment to happen in an epic fart to find its way into the locker room <laughs> at that exact moment. All right, that probably doesn't happen very often. But farts in general in the locker room, come on, guys. I mean, anybody who's been around the boys knows that that's going to happen. What what a story. I wish wish Fred Katz would have told us which player it was. He would have become an instant legend of the game. And uh, instead, you know, we're here to wander which Knicks player. (laughs) 
And the fact that they said it strung along for a lot longer than one might expect for a fart of that volume, that means it was powerful, it was loud, and it was never ending. <laughs> now, I... <laughs> I can only imagine he he was laughing. Maybe maybe he's sitting. He's laughing, and he get he did one of those rollbacks, you know, where you just kind of you, you just kind of sit back, roll back, and the push and the power of it just <laughs> let it all out. He just kind of let it hang. Oh man, I I'm not I'm not like one of those people that's like, man, I wish I I was in the room, you know, for that speech or for that like. I love just I love the stories. You know, the stories is sometimes is better than the, the actual thing itself. And this is one that the the story doesn't do it justice. Like I I wish I was in the room <laughs> for the epic fart. I've been in the room for some epic farts, I will say. One has been discussed on this very podcast before. The one that killed people at an Everclear concert. Waiting in the crowd. Our good friend, favorite one of our favorite guests of the show, Eric, let off a deadly fart that just hung in the rafters of that theater in, in Kansas City. And it, it was never the same. And I, I promise you that there's people that, I, that we don't know, the people that were just there that witnessed and smelt it. They undoubtedly knew who dealt it, and they still talk about it to this day. I promise you that's the case. That's an epic fart that I, I, I happen to have been a part of. That one didn't get to hear the audible. There was no volume to it. There was no audible. It was just, man, the residue, the the, the everlasting stench that that fart had behind it. That's the part that remained. That's the part that we felt. That's the one that sticks with us still to this day. Then there's the fart. I was at a funeral. You know, sad day. I've unfortunately had the uh, pleasure of attending many funerals in my time. Lots of family and friends. Loved ones of, of friends that are close to me. But this particular funeral, you know, it's sometimes... Kids don't know. Kids don't know the right moment for certain things. Sometimes they don't even know what they're doing. But this little girl, she had to be, what, two, three years old? She's not even sitting by herself. She's being held in the row in front of me. And at a moment of pure silence, as everybody is completely in tune and listening to the speaker at the front, the longest squeal of a fart comes out and we knew who it was and the thing is the kid didn't understand the moment that everybody around had heard <laughs> but we knew and it was great it was a it was a tension cutter it, it was something that we probably needed in that moment because you know at funerals it gets it gets serious for all the right reasons but this particular fart, in my life, has stood the test of time. <laughs> those, those are the ones that have have hung with me, that stayed with me. And then, you know, as, as some of you know, if you listen to the show, you know I, I am a uh, living example of somebody who's trying to figure out the Crohn's disease, right? And that has had its own repercussions in my life. When things aren't going so well with this disease, sometimes I'm gonna, I'm just gonna be I'm just gonna be blunt with you. The farts, like the the burning trash farts that will fill the room in the middle of the night. It's it's atrocious. I, it's it's something that uh, you know we've had to deal with, and the beauty of it is. We have found a cheat code to that. That's that's why I use a weighted blanket at night. You know, we put the we put that forty pounds of blanket right over the top of me, and we hold down these stench of the nuclear sewage 
that is coming out of my ass. I, that's that's that it is what it is. It's just it's a side effect of this terrible disease. I, we we learn to live with it, but we have the cheat code. We've got the weighted blanket. It's always at the ready. This isn't something. Now, for the record, I don't have these burning ass farts every single night okay this is just sometimes and and anybody listening going oh my god jeremy with the farts no you do too you do too maybe not all the time but you do too okay so i don't don't want the judgment coming this way on the farts let's get back to what really matters here and it's that the next one came five by 30 points and it was all (laughs) it was all because of a massive fart Have you ever thought about creating your own episode? You know, like having your own podcast. What are you waiting for? Get started at podup.com. We are one of the sponsors of this podcast, and we would love to someday sponsor yours. Starting is as easy as creating an account at podup.com today. Podup has literally everything that you need to run a full professional show. Podup has over 35 different tools with AI integration to further help you succeed. Create a free starter account or get a paid account for 15% off with code LAUGHWITHME15. So go check out podup.com. Or if you're wanting a podcast that's done for you where you pay an agency to do all the website, the social media, the editing work, you know, all the fun stuff, check out podallies.com. Pod Allies is an agency run by the folks that literally built the Pod Up podcasting software. Get started with them at podallies.com. Get 15% off when you sign up today for Pod Up or Pod Allies with code Laugh With Me 15. We can't wait to create with you and launch your podcast. You know, it's 2024, and I get like we're in that, we're in the look at me you know, era or the, the social media era. I mean, whatever you want to call it, where everything you literally, literally everything you do is put on blast, right? I mean, you're, you're putting it out there for everyone to see or everyone to know, or everyone to hear. I mean, every little detail of some people's lives. And sometimes it's like, and it's fun because we're, we're in this, we're in this world of everybody's putting everything out there. And then we're all, you know, and, and everybody's reading it and everybody's seeing it and everybody's got opinions on it. And then we're bitching about your opinions and you're bitching about your opinions. And, you know, um, you know, for example, you know, we <laughs> I was just talking the other day, you get people that use their social medias to complain about stuff. I mean, it's a it's a primarily negative account, you know, and for example, they're on there saying, uh, God, you know, I hate the weather, the stupid storm happening right now. It's waking my dogs up. Dogs can't sleep. It's 10 o'clock at night. The thunder. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what happens, right? Like the storms are loud. Shut your windows. Put some music on. I don't know. Do something. But people put their opinions out there. This is their outlet, I guess, to to get that out there, whatever it is. The, nine times out of 10, they're, they're not expecting little old me who doesn't even know you to have an opinion about how you feel about the weather and your dogs. <laughs> but shut the fuck up. Like... <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> but that's the beauty of social media, right? Like you you're putting it out there. Somebody's gonna read it, someone's gonna love it, some people aren't gonna love it. Most aren't gonna love it. And it's uh that's just that's two thousand twenty four. I mean, that's where we're at. Anything and everything is out there. But with that being said, I think we have figured out what the like epitome of on social media, the epitome of look at me, opinion, look at me, post, look at me, stance, which is silly because if, you know, let's just say I'm, you know, let's just say I, I, I'm upset with a uh, target. And I'm not. I just target. Please don't hold this against me. I don't. I used to use example. You know, first thing popped in my head. That's a plus. You know, let's, I'm I'm upset with Target, and I've decided I'm no longer going to shop at Target. I have for at least for a while. I need a Target break. 
I don't. But what if I, I need a target break? You know, maybe I just don't go there. Like, I start going other places, just change my routine, you know, check out other stores. I'll be back, but I'm going to check it out. In the time being, I'm going to take a break. This is not something that probably needs to be posted. It's not something that matters. It's really nobody's business. I'm just making a change in my personal life and where I'm going to buy my goods. The things that I really don't need, but they're there. I mean, I love it. That's that's where we're at right now. Any little thing that you don't like or any little thing that you're making a change in your life, you're making the final, I'm never doing this again type of post. And I love it when it's about the very social media app you're on. The... Ladies and gentlemen, I'm never going to post a Facebook again post. Um, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> There's nothing more. Look at me. I'm taking a stand <laughs> in 2024 than this. And it's usually something really, really dumb. You know, like the aforementioned uh, thunderstorm and the dogs post. You posted it. You put it out in the world socially. People then socially posted on it and were like, put some music on. <laughs> Shut the windows. <laughs> it's the freaking weather. <laughs> you know, and you get mad about it. And you're like, people, I'm just telling you, my dogs don't like it. It's the weather. It's 1030 at night. No more. I can't have it. <laughs> and I don't like that all you have opinions about my post. So you know what? This is bullshit. This is my final post. Yep. This is my final Facebook post. I am no longer coming here. It's too negative. And I need a break. That's, that is so, look at me. <laughs> I'm taking a stand about something that I created. Be proud. Also be sad because you're not going to see my opinions anymore for a little bit. Which, you know, what's it, like a week? Can they even make it a week? Those people that make their final posts. People that are leaving Twitter forever because Elon messed it up. No, they don't make it a week. And you know what? Maybe they're taking a break from actually posting. You know they're on there checking out what you're up to. That's what they really want. They want to get away and no questions asked, where'd you go? But I want to see what you're going on. What's, what's, what's you got going on? That's that's what it is. That's 100% what it is. Just stop. Just stop. I, 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 I think we need to start a trend of when people do this, let's call them out on this bullshit. You're not going anywhere. You'll be back posting about the weather and your dogs in no time because guess what there's going to be another storm tomorrow or maybe next week the wind you know the wind's going to be bad you'll be back (laughs) and we'll be there to tell you Folks, the Omaha Take Steps Walk, the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation's biggest fundraiser of the year, is happening in Papillion, Nebraska, June 15th, 9 a.m. at Werner Park. You'll find us at the Dedication Ribbon ribbon Ceremony. Hey, if you're interested in just walking and joining the fun, come on out. Join Laugh With Me podcast team, and you can find out information for that at takesteps.crohnscolitisfoundation.org, or you can go to that site. And kindly donate where we are looking to help find a cure for Crohn's and colitis. You know, if nothing else, if nothing else, please go to the Laugh With Me podcast socials and help share the information as we are doing our best to help the cause. Take steps towards the cure. Join join Crohn's and Clyde's Foundation's largest, most impactful fundraising event, Take Steps. We'll come together as a dedicated community of supporters to walk and raise funds for those living with inflammatory bowel disease, otherwise known as IBD. Funds raised through Take Steps help to accelerate research, advance treatments, 
and provide education and support programs to improve quality of life for those living with IBD. Together, we'll make our way to the top of Mount Remission and our ultimate goal, cures for Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Again, this walk is at Werner Park in Pipilia, Nebraska, the Omaha Take Steps Walk, June 15th at 9 a.m. Thank you so much to those of you who have donated to the uh, the Laugh With Me walk team in you know to help take steps. Uh, my Aunt Kim, our buddy Eric Larson, uh, my, my parents, mom and dad, thank you so much. We, we, we've had quite a few different uh, donators, and I appreciate it as uh, every little bit will help us take steps to curing Crohn's and Clyde's. I tell you, I, 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 if we were to ever find a cure or at least find something to put this thing in remission, <laughs> it'd probably help with my burning trash fart situation that happens. It's, again, it's not something that happens all the time. It's just something that occasionally, when it does happen, we you know, you know that it's happening. And, uh, you know, we just make sure that the uh, the weighted blanket is at the ready to hold down the farts. Uh, my family, my family appreciates it. I don't know if you guys have been following uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, the last few years. It's hard not to hear his name or hear, and, and he hasn't even played in quite a long time. I mean, he had a pretty average, especially for his standards, a pretty average final season in Green Bay in 2022. Then he had a just a banger of an entrance into the first game of 23 before blowing that uh, it was a it, ACL or whatever he did, blew his knee out, missed the whole season. But he didn't go away. I mean, he wasn't uh, the quiet type. You know, weekly appearances on Pat McAfee's show. And then once that became too much, <laughs> he's been quiet there. But he's popping up everywhere right now as we're heading into uh, the 2024 season. And he, he had the audacity today to say to his teammates, to the organization, to the media of the Jets, you know, no more distractions. We need to focus on football. When it's time for football, it's time for football. No more of the BS. But with that being said, he's got this little thing called the uh, freedom of speech. So he he's gonna be he's gonna be talking. He's gonna be saying things, and none of those things should be a factor in distracting anybody because he has his right to do this. Hey, Aaron, do you know how that works, right? Like, yeah, you've got the right to say whatever you want to say. There's repercussions to it, you know, like being a distraction. It just blows my mind. Oh, the people that don't understand what that means. <laughs> and he actually, he, he admitted he, he was a vice president potential candidate for RFK Jr. J.R., J.R., Robert, Robert Kennedy Jr., RFK, I don't know. You know who he is. He's not going to be president. That's why I'm not even bothering to know the correct initials, but... It's just nuts to me. Like I, the, my first initial reaction to that, it was an actually true story that Robert Kennedy Jr. That's what it, 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 it just blew my mind that he was an actual candidate for vice president at first. Then I thought about it. Why not? Why not Aaron Rodgers? That's what America is, right? I mean, if you want to run, you can run. I mean, if. Anybody can run. I mean, there's certain qualifications, certain age, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anybody can do it. You get the signatures. We just got so accustomed to, you know, it's the politicians, career politicians. Like, you, you, these are the folks. And, you know, and certain somebody kind of threw that up in the air. And, and now everybody's running. But, yeah, I mean, and the, and the is that the, the history always has some goofy candidates along the way. Those folks just generally don't win. They generally don't make headline news. Oh, man, any more, I don't know. I think Aaron Rodgers could end up being in office someday. I mean, he's got a very popular name. He's definitely not afraid of standing in front of you and telling you his opinion and standing behind it, as crazy as it may be. Oh, good for him. I Maybe this is his 
uh, career post uh, NFL, and he's coming closer and closer to that every day. But man, the 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 audacity to say, guys, we've got to focus. Football guys, stick to football. <laughs> when he's Mister <laughs> Podcast appearance on a week every week and give opinions on things that causes mainstream headlines. Come on, buddy. It's time to look in the mirror. And not just for that haircut. Oh, folks, we are on the back end of season number one. We're gearing up for season number two, which is going to be the official launch on our YouTube page. And we're bringing the video of every episode to you, but not quite yet. We are not ready. Season two is coming, and it's coming with a major announcement. But before we get to all that, before we have the YouTube launch... Baby, we're bringing you the Friday Happy Hour. This Friday, brand new episode. we got a surprise special guest for you, and we are officially launching Funny Guy Summer. It is summertime, and this summer, this summer's for the fellas, and not just any fella. It's for the funny ones. Funny Guy Summer launching this Friday at the Friday Happy Hour. You'll find it on the Laugh With Me feed episodes a week thank you so much for listening